Hi guys, and welcome back to another episode of the Switch Update. Yeah, we've got a couple of news items for you today and uh, a general bit of conversation yeah. based on things we've been playing and what have you and some of your questions as well. Okay, first piece of news this week then is that Pokemon Sword specifically has gone to number one in the UK sales charts. Nice. Now this only includes uh, physical sales, it doesn't include digital, and of course it means it, it's beat out the Star Wars game on other consoles to get there, which is at number two. So it's beaten all, well it's total sales of all the other consoles? For that game, for yeah. the Star Wars get, uh, game combined, yes, yeah, Star Wars. Uh, Pokemon, Pokemon Sword is at the top. I think Shield is third or fourth, I believe. So yeah, so Pokemon Sword is at number one. Pokemon yeah. Shield is at number three. And then you have the combined dual edition as well is at number seven. Oh boy. So it's three <laughs> of the top 10 spots are actually taken up by the Pokemon game. Oh man, for one console to do that, that is pretty impressive, it is isn't impressive, it? It is especially in the UK as well. Yeah. Because Nintendo uh, predominantly don't do very well over here. No. I mean, I don't know about you, but when I was a kid, I, I always grew up with Nintendo consoles, but Sega, more widely known. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and over here, I mean, the, the charts even this week again show it. You've got yeah. FIFA and you've got Call of Duty. It's just big games. They're, they're the games that, you know, I, I don't like to generalise because I don't play those games that much, but as a whole in the UK market, they're the games that sell. Yeah. And obviously I know FIFA's on the, uh, on the Switch, but let's be honest, it was a bit of a, you know, it was, it was a, a P release, wasn't it? Yeah, this time it really around. was. And really obviously was. no Call of Duty to have that game go to the top of the charts yeah. is impressive. And actually there are six games in the top 10, six Nintendo games in the top 10 this week yeah. in the UK charts. Which so is... the whole uh, Dexit thing didn't really pan out quite in the terms Not of really. everyone. I, mass... I don't think it was ever going, was it? I no. mean, people will buy what they want to buy. Um, there's been review bombing, hasn't there? Or, oh, has or there? reports of review bombing on Metacritic. Oh, right, fair but enough. Again, I mean, even that, I think that's been over overblown. I read some of the, there was a report on it. I won't say where I read it, but yeah. um, they kind of went with the headline of, you know, huge review bombing. And some of them are blatantly review bombs. You know, yeah. they'll say things like, I like the game, but it's-, it's Too many Pokemon. Too, yeah, too, yeah. <laughs> too big a score, so I'm going to give it a zero. I mean, right. that's a review bomb. But then others were people articulately stating why they didn't like the game. Which and is that's fair, fair enough. enough, isn't it? Do you yeah. know what I mean? So I do think even that's been over overblown mm. a little bit, to be honest. Interesting on the same note, is that uh, modders have already managed to put in some of the old Pokemon into the game. So they've obviously ripped it, used the hacked switch, and been able to put some original Pokemon in there quite easily, which I don't know if that's going to appease some of the fans that were a little bit disappointed. I don't, there's also, and I don't, I haven't read into this. I'm just going off of a couple of headlines I saw. So please do let me know exactly what has happened in the comments. Yeah. But I did read that some of the, um, I think this is what led to some of the review bombs. Mm -hmm. Some of the models being used are not new. Models and that which was reused assets. Yes, which was uh, the reason they gave as to why new po uh, old Pokemon sorry wouldn't be in it. Do you see what I mean? <laughs> yeah, okay. But I, may, right. I may have misinterpreted that. I'm going off a couple of headlines I saw. So again, you know, let us know in the comments exactly what the score is there. Right. So, AKA, we were finishing Little Town Hero. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, possibly. And Squirtle's probably accidentally pops up in, in there, there somewhere, yeah. doesn't it? Just wandering around. <laughs> Looking right, for a Pokemon Center. <laughs> your questions. Okay, so what have you been playing this week? What have I been playing this week? Well, <laughs> I felt like I was going to do the Pinky and the Brain line there. The I same game I play every <laughs> week, Pinky. <laughs> I've been doing a touch of The Witcher 3. I'm mm -hmm. not going to lie. It's there, Glenn. But <laughs> these people understand. It's unbelievable. It's just such a good game. But obviously, I've been having to play quite a bit. Having to play. Listen, listen to that first world problem. Yeah. Having to play a lot of Children of Mortar, which I really got into, didn't I? Yeah, I, yeah. I was messaged Glenn and I was like, because we were going to split the review just because mm. of time. Uh, and if you saw the channel this morning, you'll see I had to upload the video twice because yeah. I made it while I was half asleep and accidentally <laughs> put the wrong score. It's good for a teacher, isn't it? Yeah. Um, but Children of Mortar is an excellent game. It's kind of a mixture between like, uh, and, uh, and you have to have kind of played these to understand it, but it's an old school Diablo. So it's not like your, your modern ones. It's more like the old school in right. terms of the visual and, and like you'll have two or three enemy types that just bombard you. You've got the random generation in, mm. the, in the different stages. But the controls of the character are absolutely great. Mm. Like you, you really feel like it's just super responsive. I've only played about an hour of it, yeah. Um, so I'm nowhere near as far into it as you, you obviously got. But 
yeah, as you say, very early on, you're given a block, you're given a, yeah. a special, you're given obviously your, your basic controls, you're given a lot to to uh, defend yourself yeah. with and use in battle, aren't you? It's very good. Yeah, yeah really good. What about yourself? Um, I've been playing um, a bit of Little Nightmares. Is that? That's not the one with the little kid, is it? Yeah, like the little raincoat wearing. Ah, uh, okay. Do you know the one I mean? Yes, yeah. It's, I would say I was thinking of a different one. Oh, okay. No, no. It's like they've got a like, little uh, yellow raincoat on. Yeah, I know the one. It's like a puzzle platformer. Is it horror? Yeah, it's, it's like more disturbing or warped right. than pure okay. horror, but yeah, it has its moments. Yeah. Um, so I've been playing a bit of that. I got into that again, writing that horror list that I did a couple of weeks back, whenever it was, and I've dipped in and out of it since, mm. but I've played a bit of it this week. Very good game. And it's. Because you, you kind of play rooms, you know, like you move on to room to room and it yeah. almost saves fairly frequently. So it's a good game to just play a few rooms off mm -hmm. and then put down so you can dip in and out of it quite nicely. Do you know what I mean? So what's the main premise? So the main premise is that you are a child named Six, I think her name is, and uh, you wake up. It's very mysterious to start with, do you know what I mean? And uh, you, yeah, you're, you're kind of, um, you wake up with you know, no idea where you are mm. and you're making it way through, your way through this, uh, this, this um, complex that you're in. Mm -hmm. Um, but you, it has that kind of disturbing imagery. Like you'll be walking through, and there'll be someone hanged. Yeah. But it won't draw your attention to it at all. Do you mm -hmm. know what I mean? It won't. The camera won't pan to it. It won't make a big deal of it. It's just there, and you kind of notice it almost at the last minute. That's like, cool. Oh my word. Do you know what I mean? That's cool. How's and it do visually? It, it looks good. I mean, it's a, it's slightly blurry in handheld yeah. mode. Um, but nothing to be worried about. And to be honest, as <laughs> strange as it sounds, it probably adds to the effect a little bit in this game, yeah. do you know what I mean? Yeah, very cool. I've also been playing a bit of um, the Super Nintendo. Oh, really? Mm. What, with April or just on your own? Yeah, no, with my little girl. Um, I've got the Beauty and the Beast game um, <laughs> from like 94, whatever it was. Um, it's not one of the better Disney games. Yeah. It's, it's pretty average platformer. But she enjoys it. That's very cool. So, um, so we played a bit of that on on, like, pro on the proper hardware on on, on the yeah. Super Nintendo. Nice. Yeah, it was good. It was that good. is very cool. Yeah. Lovely. All right. So, we should we look at some of the questions on the last video that we had? Mm. All right. So, the first question this week is from Rafael Marrera. I think I got that right. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, Raf. <laughs> um, and he asks, "How did we meet, basically, to okay. form the channel? Hmm. How did we meet?" Um, okay. So we met. Oh, dear me, about seven years ago now, I think. Maybe a bit longer than that, seven or eight years ago. <sighs> We've been in our 20s. So yeah, I know. Young and, yeah. Full of hope. <laughs> <laughs> Full of dreams, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but um, you worked at a school, when yeah. I first met you, you worked at a school as a, a teaching assistant. Yeah, TA, yeah, yeah. And I joined the school as a new teacher. Yep. But then you left, so I, I met you very briefly. Yes, yeah. And then you came back about a year later mm -hmm. to train to be a teacher. Yep. And I ended up being your mentor, and we became friends. <laughs> the gaming way. mentor. <laughs> there he is. So that was that was how we met, and yeah, we became friends from there. We worked together for about four years, didn't we? Yeah. Go on. What but there's a say? key moment, right? right. Key on. moment. I went up to Glenn's room, and I was like, Glenn, blah 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 blah. I've seen this. Look, look at this game I've installed on my iPhone, right? And it was Monster Hunter uh, Free. Four, free. free. Monster free, Hunter yeah. Free on on the iPhone. He was like, oh yeah, the Monster Hunter series like amazing and basically convinced me to like really spend some time with it. <laughs> and then it was game over, wasn't it? Yeah, I basically yeah. invaded his house, <laughs> got cut up. I even put, <laughs> this is a secret, right? Shh. I even convinced my missus that he gave me his DS. <laughs> <laughs> and then we just played that for 600 yeah. hours odd, didn't we? Yeah, yeah, so you, yeah, that's right. You bought it on the <laughs> iPad. So I'd had free, Monster Hunter free on the Wii yeah. U and the 3DS previous to that. And I had a spare 3DS going because I just bought the Monster Hunter 4 Special yes. Edition. So yeah, I gave you my old one and you bought yourself a copy of 4. Mm -hmm. And then yeah, we had regular gaming weekend, Friday nights, didn't we, of Monster Hunter. Yeah. Smashed it all the way through to G rank. Yep, absolutely caned it. And then got to, the Switch came out. We were basically waiting for Monster Hunter to come out on the Switch, weren't we? Yeah. And this yeah. kind of answers the next question. Someone said, like, how did the channel start? Mm -hmm. We were still playing when Monster Hunter came out on the Switch, kind of playing a bit of that, but we still were playing the old one, weren't we? Yeah. Just hoping that the Switch had it at launch, mm. which it didn't. No. Um, and then, what was it? I think I requested... Oh, because I used to run a YouTube channel called uh, Sir Walrus Gaming. That's what this started as, which is why we can't get the verified tick at the moment. Annoying. Um, so I used to run that, it was just Fallout videos and whatnot. Mm. And then, yeah, we were playing a lot of Switch, and there was a, I requested a code just off 
on the off chance. I think I just requested a code for something. Yeah, it was, um, oh dear me, it was a, a point and click game called Her Majesty's Something. Spiffing. Yeah, Her Majesty's Spiffing, that's it. Yeah. Um, yeah, and we got a code in for that, or a couple of codes, mm -hmm. and we wrote half a review each, didn't we? Yeah. Or something like that, and spliced yeah. it together. Sounds nice and fluid, and that you guys can hopefully get a good picture of what we both think of the game from two completely different perspectives. Her Majesty's Spiffin is a point and click game at heart, and I would hazard a guess that the developers are big fans of the LucasArts gems of the past. Yeah. And I'm sure it's still on there somewhere. We'll put a link in the description. Yeah, you can go and watch our yeah. first ever one, because it is. <laughs> it is, isn't it? It's, yeah, it was a learning curve, that's for sure. <laughs> but, um, a learning ladder. <laughs> yeah, for sure. But yeah, that was, so that was the first proper video, wasn't it? Yeah. In, in what you would you recognise as the channel now. Yeah. And um, it kind of snowballed from there. It did. There yeah. were a few, obviously, uh, the earlier reviews where we, we bought the games ourselves yeah, yeah, and yeah. just made videos of oh. them. So I think <laughs> my FIFA review, I started like, <laughs> starts off with me like in bed or something weird. <laughs> and I'm like filming out, it's just so odd. Yeah. Um, I films like there's videos, if you go through the archives of us, like, ill. It's just, it's just, it's so janky. Yeah. And it's like people, sometimes, especially when there's a sale and one of the games we covered yeah. early is on sale. So someone will find one of those old, old videos that are only on like, I don't know, whatever, 600, 700 views. And they'll com comment on like the voice especially, isn't yeah. it? Oh, your voice is so much different. Because when you first start, it sounds silly, but you yeah. when you're talking into a microphone, you talk quietly because yeah. you feel embarrassed, don't you? Yeah, definitely. And you, you don't, you hold yourself back because you don't want people to hear what you're saying. Yeah. And obviously that comes across in the video. You don't notice it at the time. No. It's only when you go back and you think, oh dear me, like, Honestly, yeah. yeah. I, I thought I was I had it dialed from day one, yeah. and then you go back and you're like, oh, yeah. It's, it's, it's. But I tell you what, there's a, there's the opposite end of that as well. Mm -hmm. Like I'm finding it difficult not to switch on a certain voice nowadays when I make videos. Right. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. you almost go into YouTube voice. Yeah. And that it, that also isn't as uh, is isn't, isn't great. Like uh, there needs to be that middle ground right. of you're actually a human being. I think that's why it's nice doing this. Yeah. Because you can just. Yeah, when you're talking, you you do you go into professional mode for want yeah. of a better word, don't you? Yeah. When when you're talking like this, it, your natural voice just comes out, doesn't it? Yeah. 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 <laughs> That's not your natural voice. <laughs> nice one. <laughs> uh, another one that wasn't necessarily a question, but well, I suppose it was a question because it had a question mark at the end. That's a question. It yeah. said, um, "Is your friendship formed around <laughs> Mark just winding you up?" <laughs> you can answer that, Glenn. <laughs> When I met Mark, he was the single most annoying person I'd ever met. But I don't mean that in the way it probably sounds, because it was a, <laughs> it was a sort of annoying that you, like Donkey from Shrek. Yeah, yeah, it was endearing. That's the word I'm looking for. It was endearing. You'd think he was a Wally, but in, in the inside you were smiling about it. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? There you go. So yeah, I suppose it was annoying. Yeah. Let's switch this around. <laughs> yeah. yeah, when I met Glenn, um, he was very serious. Very serious, so I thought he was, but then actually you break the surface, and like you say, like when he relaxes, mm. then you get all the the, the the comedy gold come out, and there's a lot of like. <laughs> I'm the sort of person that I, I I don't like to be outwardly funny. Yeah, I'm not. I won't go out of my way to make jokes. Yeah, I'll make a joke at the back of a room that's hilarious. <laughs> by yeah. the way, yeah. Some, <laughs> someone else will hear it yeah. and say it out loud to everyone, and everyone will laugh. Yeah. And think that person come up with it. I've done that before. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, yeah. Mm. But someone asked um, our thoughts on Baldur's Gate. Yeah. Do you want All right. It? Yeah. I mean, the Switch version is the exact same port that was on the iPad, which I played through extensively, and I played the original one or two games and the expansions on PC. They're really good games, but by today's standards, if you're picking it up, you might have certain expectations of what that genre should have that it might not have. Mm -hmm. You can play as so many different classes, you could spend hundreds and hundreds of hours, like for example if you're like me and you like to play as like a sneaky, lock-picking, assassin type class, mm -hmm. you can do that. Story dialogue's heavily affected by the points you put into your character. It's massive and it's all based on the uh, AD&D rules, so if you know anything about Dungeons and Dragons, oh, like okay. you've got, yeah, you know, it's all based on that rule set. Um, which actually helps, it gives everything a structure. Mm. So when you're doing damage, you know that it's, you know, you kind of get an idea of what's going to work, what's not going to work. Is it, has it got the, the creatures from yes. Dungeons and Dragons in it? Yeah, as well? and it's got some oh, of the creatures cool. from, like from the Beholder those. and stuff like that. Yes, and... yeah, oh, indeed. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, there's a whole expansion based around, around that. I'll tell you what, on that, I'm going to ask you a question. Okay. All right. Nothing to do with the Switch, because you know, why would it be? You know? Why would it be? 
What's your favourite film? Your favourite movie? Favourite film? Mm. Um, it's going to be quite. A, do you know what? Actually, it's not. This is going to be super controversial. Go on. This is going to be super controversial. Everyone's going to be like, no, this is going to cause people some physical discomfort. <laughs> Go on then. What is it? All right. Well, it's, it's two. Can I do two? Yeah. All right. There's two tied. The first one is Fight Club. I remember right. watching Fight Club and I watched the whole thing through. I thought, yeah, that was decent. I didn't understand what on earth had just happened. <laughs> Literally, I sat down <laughs> almost immediately, watched it again, and was like, oh. And it's one of those films you can watch. I think I've watched that about 15 times. Yeah. Every time you watch it, you'll pick out something yeah. different. Yeah. I'm not saying that Brad Pitt's the best actor. It's more, for me, it was Ed, Edward Norton. Mm -hmm. But fair play, Brad Pitt does a good job in mm -hmm. this film. Um, Bob's awesome as well. It's just a great, that was me, great wasn't film. It? That was me. Yeah, it was. Which yeah. is crazy. <laughs> yeah. Is, uh, yeah, well, yeah. Meaty yeah. loaves. <laughs> <laughs> I stated in. <laughs> what about you? What was your second one first? Oh, the second one first was... This is a controversial. Go on. You, you're going to say I've never even seen it. It's Interstellar. I have. No, I, I haven't seen it, but I know what you. I know it. It's what Interstellar. It is. Yeah. Who's the main guy in it? Oh, I forget his name. Matthew McConaughey. 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 Yeah. Is okay. it McConaughey? Something like that. Yeah. McConaughey. McConaughey yeah, yeah. So it's Matthew McConaughey. Uh, I just I love space things, and I love space things that just try something a little bit different. Mm. And 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 while the whole I don't want to spoil it too much, but the whole gravity love thing. Yeah, but I had just had a daughter as well, so there was a bit of that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. What about you? Um, okay. Well, I think my favourite is probably. Oh, there's again two. Funny enough. Yeah. One is the Shawshank Redemption. Mm -hmm. Um, because I remember seeing that as a kid, and it's not the sort of film That's you necessarily film. watch as a as a child, and um, it just grabbed me. I couldn't yeah. believe for a film that generally is at that age you'd watch and say this is boring. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I couldn't take my eyes off it, and it was such a. The ending's amazing. Yeah. Um, oh, just just such a good film. Gives gives you goosebumps when you watch it. Um, which is based on a, a short Stephen King novella. I know that. Did, yeah. Yes, I, I didn't know it until fairly recently, actually. Yeah. yeah. Um, but that's one of them. And the other one is actually Rocky. Really. Yeah. The first Rocky there you film. Go. Because again, I think maybe sometimes it's the sort of film that gets a bad rap because it's about boxing and mm -hmm. it's got Stallone and obviously now or since then Stallone's been in lots of other films but actually if you watch that film it's a, it's a love story first and foremost yeah but it's one of the most uplifting yeah. films yeah yeah with the classic line at the end but it's such an uplifting film yeah about just struggle against daily life and wanting to be just a, a bit more than mm -hmm. you are do you know what I mean yeah. just push yourself and be that bit more such a good film. Yeah, I Cue love it. the Rocky. training montage. <laughs> <laughs> the switch up montage. What's the one game that you're most looking forward to for the end of this year? Or on the what, did we talk about the, the game you'd most like to see come to the Switch? Well, um, last week we spoke about kind of the classic games, didn't we? Mm -hmm. that, um, so that was all right. What about questions. your dream game? The dream game, any game at all, even what? one that's not made yet. I'll tell you one actually, I don't have to try that hard because one is coming that um, I'm very much looking forward to. Yeah. And that's uh, Deadly Premonition 2. Ah, uh, yeah, I remember. Because it, this is quite, it was quite strange. Um, it must have been about two months ago now, maybe, maybe three months ago. Um, I was away on holiday and you uh -huh. text me. We were kind of just spitballing ideas for um, future videos. Yeah. And you text me about uh, what about um, games you'd love to see ported yeah. to the Switch. And one of my games was. Deadly Premonition, mm -hmm. which I had on the Xbox, and it's a bit of a, not a hidden gem necessarily, but it's a bit of a cult game. Yeah. It's a very clunky, old school, like Resident Evil type. Tank controls? Tank controls, yeah. all that. And um, then about a month later, it got announced as a shadow drop, like it's on the, it's on the eShop now. Which was, <laughs> I, I, it's the sort of game I thought, you know, it'd be fun to include because it will never happen. Yeah. And then yeah. it just out of nowhere, it was like, well, that happened. Yeah. You know what I mean? And yeah. not only that, they then said there was a sequel coming as well. Oh, nice. So I'm looking forward to so That's a brand sequel. new game? Yes. So the old... That's very cool. The first one, the one that I was talking about, released as Deadly Premonition's Origins. Yeah. Um, and I haven't bought it yet because I think there's a physical release coming, so I'm oh, waiting for that. Nice. And I, I will definitely buy it again. And um, the next one is just Deadly Premonition 2. Mm -hmm. And I think on the eShop at the minute, it's just got one of those vague 2020 right. dates. Okay. So I'm definitely looking forward to that. Right, what's yours? Uh, my one is Everspace 2. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah so yeah. I absolutely loved the first Everspace game on mm -hmm. the Nintendo Switch. It's got a review, which the links will be down in the description. But Everspace 2, we recently saw at EGX, mm. and it looks amazing. Yeah, it it looks so good. I actually reached out to the devs and they said that 
the performance on the Switch isn't good enough, which sounds like a bit of a cop out yeah. to me if I'm completely honest there are there are sacrifices that can be made especially with space sims you can get away with quite a lot because that open area is just generally just a large skybox yeah. with some things floating around mm. in it so for me it would definitely be Everspace 2 on the switch yeah yeah <laughs> one word corpse in corpse in look up the word corpse in and yeah. then uh, you'll, you'll be understand. ready to see the outtakes yeah. exactly lovely cheers guys for all things switch all the time keep it switch up see ya <laughs> I think you should say it no. <laughs> <laughs>